Barry, we've talked a lot about various insurance topics that I get phone calls and questions from my clients. And I'm sure uh, our viewers would like to know some things um, uh, that, that are uh, of interest today in current events, we might call it. Um, we've had a lot of catastrophes, both nationwide and worldwide, and that has to begin to affect our insurance companies and their approach to the, the, the business that we are, they are doing with us uh, the pricing, et cetera. What are you seeing in that area? That's correct, Tom. Tennessee has been in the past a state that was always the most desirable for insurance companies, so our rates were very competitive. I think at one time we had the lowest rates, the fifth lowest rates in the nation. But what we've seen in the last couple years is because of the natural disasters, the hail storms, wind storms, tornadoes, that we're not as desirable. And so um, all of our carriers are increasing rights, um, restricting coverages, definitely um, more restrictive on renewals, non-renewing accounts that you know have two or more claims, two or more weather-related claims. In the past, weather-related claims were considered catastrophes. You had no control so they wouldn't hold those against you, but now they do. They look at every claim. Um, they want to be profitable, and that's their, that's, they think that's their way to be profitable, to just turn, turn loose those accounts. Well, of course, when it happens to an entire area, where do you run and where do you hide? That's true. We've, luckily, we do have some carriers that we have a large volume with, and they're, they're more acceptable to um, accounts, it's full accounts. What I tell clients now, you, can, you can't piecemeal your insurance coverage. One, your auto with one carrier and your home with another, you need to have it all with the same carrier because they are also looking at that. But we do have specialty markets, Lloyd's of London, that they will insure pretty much any risk, no matter how many claims you've had. Of course, you're gonna pay more premium too. Sure. Uh, I know uh, this year we had some huge hailstorms here in the Nashville area and really all over Tennessee. How is that going to affect? Tell me how they handle those claims. Those claims, that was interesting because it was kind of like the flood. You know, you had so many individuals whose homes had hail damage. I think in Nashville and Franklin, we've replaced almost every roof um, due to hail damage. So um, what's happened is, you know, roofers, come up here from Florida, anywhere, and are going door to door, you know, we'll check your roof. Your insurance company has to pay this claim if it was hail damage. So it's, our carriers are paying the claims because most people did have hail damage, but what that ultimately means is everyone's rates are going to increase. And they're replacing a new roof for an old roof at the insurance company's expense. Exactly. Um, I have a perfect example. I have a neighbor whose house is 10 years old and he had hail damage, but I didn't have hail damage. And it's a 10 year old roof, so you know he probably would have to replace it another five to 10 years anyway, but because he had hail damage, his insurance carrier had to pay to replace the whole roof. How much longer can they afford to do that? Well, that's, that's an issue. And so they've taken steps to, to try to control this. Um, we've seen some carriers, Farm Bureau being the first one, and I think Allstate has also done this, where they are actually, actually adding a coverage called actual cash value for your roof. So they're gonna depreciate the value if you do have a hail or any kind of roof claim. So instead of paying replacement cost for a 10, 15 year old roof, they'll depreciate what they'll pay to fix your roof. So and then you pay got the rest. A, if they've got a 20 year roof and it's 10 years old, they'd pay you half the claim. Exactly. Okay. Well. Which, it's not a home warranty policy, so it makes sense. Um, we hear, I've got a lot of my clients that have property uh, in Florida, coastal properties. Um, can they expect the same kind of coverage there that they have here? 
No, on the coastal properties, most carriers do have a wind and hail and a hurricane deductible. Depending on the area that the property is located, if it's right on the water, of course, there's going to be a higher deductible than if it's something inland. So, but what we're seeing is our carriers are, are offering coverage in those areas, but on a very limited basis. They can buy the windstorm, though. Yes. Yes. For, for a price. For a price. Uh, without going to the windstorm pool? Some of them, again, it depends on where the property is located. If it's on the water, the company may offer fire and theft, all other lines, but wind and hail, and then they can go to the wind pool. Another thing we're seeing is that there are small independent companies that are cropping up in Florida and South Carolina that are offering wind and hail and full coverage. But what we found is these companies aren't heavily subsidized. In other words, they don't have a lot of money to back them if their clients do have clients. So they're one storm away yes, from going exactly, under. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. Well, that's a pretty good briefing. Uh, I think this is something our clients need to know about.